Okay, you guys have been absolutely killing me with requests on how to do something based on if somebody is part of a class or a team. So here we have an ATM machine. We're going to get some cash out of it. We've got 75 coins. All right, we're going to go change our class with this class selector right here because those are the good books. It makes us more powerful jumping. We're also going to be covering how to change somebody's gravity and speed based on their class. We're going to get some cash and you'll see here we get 150 instead of 75. And if we come back to this, we're also going slower. So we are going to learn three things in this tutorial. We are going to learn how to give different things, how to affect behavior different things based on class. And as a bonus, we're also going to learn how to distribute gold at very particular amounts because that was a request that came through as well. I hope you guys like this Christmas themed sort of scene. I've also got on my Christmas shirt. If you remember from before, the hat gets keyed out. It's kind of weird. Right before we get into this tutorial though, I want to thank all of you legends over on Patreon. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for being part of the team. On a total side note, I have been absolutely stacked with work lately and we have just released Tokyo Zone Wars. I'm so excited about this. This was going to be an experiment to see how Discovery works works, the algorithm works. We were going to just do something over a period of a couple of hours, Jivan and I, but it turns out we are both way too particular when it comes to making games. So we spent almost a week creating this Zone Wars in Tokyo. It is fantastic. There are lots of great mechanics in here to look for and watch. And if you like build games and Zone Wars games, this one is fun. Watch out for Godzilla. All right, let's figure out how we can make all of this happen in UEFN and Verse. Okay, we are inside of UEFN. I'm gonna give you guys a good understanding of the layout and everything that's going on in this scene so you can understand. We have our player spawner, just one of them. Over here, we have a button inside of the ATM machine. We've got a few things changed on it. If we take a look over in the details panel, we can see that we've got our interact time set to one. This gives just a little bit of extra time to press it. And then we have our interaction text set to get cash because it's an ATM machine. And then finally, we also have the interaction radius set to one so that we have a bigger space to interact with this button. Over here, we have a day sequence device that just gives me the ability to set the scene because I really enjoy making nice scenes when it comes to games or tutorials. We've got our two item granters. Both of these give gold. We can see over here in the details panel, we have an item list inside of here is gold. This one has groups of 10, so it gives 10 at a time and the other one gives one at a time. We want to do that because we are giving 150 gold or 75 gold. I'll cover that in the verse part of this tutorial. You can also have hundreds and thousands and ten thousands, I think, if you want. I've never built one with ten thousands before, but you could. Uh, we've got our game manager, which is our verse file that we're going to be talking over in a second. And we have two class designers. These are very important because we are playing with two classes in this game. You can use more. This allows us to set our movement multiplier to either 0.5 with gravity of high for class slot one or for class slot two, we have a movement multiplier of two. So we go even faster. Our gravity is low. So these class designers are what set up our movement. So depending Depending on which class you are, you get to move fast or slow. And those are automatic. Those are devices that are inside of UEFN. So there are devices inside of UEFN that allow you to sort of set these things up automatically. But we're also going to talk about how to do things inside of Verse because it's a really requested tutorial. OK, and last but not least, inside of the bookstore, we have our two class selectors. If you go into this zone here, you become class one. All right. And this one here, you become class two. These are just devices that live inside of the devices folder. So that allows us to set the class of the player when they step into it. In our island settings, our default class is set to one. And that is everything in the scene to set this up. Let's go take a look inside of verse. OK, we're inside a verse. Let's talk about how to code up a bunch of stuff inside of this game here. If you don't know how to code in verse, there's a link in the description below that talks about how to make a game manager. And that's what we have here. We also have a custom player file as well. Talked about that in a couple of tutorials on why it's very important to put all of your players inside of a custom player map. Super important. You should be doing this all the time, no matter how simple your project. All right, so let's run through the two files. We've got our game manager and our custom player, as you can see here. This one's very simple. Our game manager has our player's map set at the very top. We've got gold to give. This is just an initial amount that I decided to use, 150, because it will give us an odd amount when we have. Okay, we've got two classes in here, the poor class and the rich class. We've got our two class selectors here. They are class and team selector devices. And then we've got our gold granters, which are item granter devices. All of these devices live inside of the devices folder in the content browser, Fortnite devices 
and then you start to look inside of here for all the devices you might want. We also have our spawn pad. We only have one in here, so we're just going to have this spawn pad one. It's a player spawner device and our cache button, which is just a normal button device. In our on begin, which runs as soon as the game starts, we're setting up all of our items that need to be responded to. So this is done with a subscribe function. So our spawn pad one has a spawn event when the player spawns. We subscribe to this function here on player spawn. The class select Selectors each have their own class change function that we're going to call class one change and class two change. And the cache button has an interacted with event event. And we subscribe to that with the on cache button interact function. So let's take a look at these four functions. So on player spawned, we want to remember this player in our player's map because we want to be able to control them really easily and add things to them. So let's take a look at the custom player file really quickly. It is just a simple class. We pass in an agent object, which I call my agent object. It's useful for later. We set the team and class to one because remember, we can do this for teams as well. This is In this case, we're just doing it for classes, but we can also do teams. So I've set up setters and getters, and these are really important. So we've got our set team and our get team and our set class and our get class. Now, I'm not going to go into private and public variables and stuff like that, but you really do want to think about making these private like that. And what this does is it stops the ability for somebody to go say from the game manager here if uh, we were to do this so this is a custom player just bear with me for a second we can't set team to one like this it won't work because team is a private variable so we won't be able to set the team like this we have to use the setter function which is right here so it's a good idea to make your variables private when you have getters and setters like this OK, so we have our set class and our get class, and these are very simple. We're just setting this variable here within the class itself. Very, very important. In the game manager, we are catching the on player spawned event. It passes in the agent. We're going to set up our custom player like this because we need the agent object passed in as my agent object. This is how we do it when we instantiate the custom player class object. And then we will use the option because when we want to set something inside of a map, it has to be done in an option or an if and because uh, it could fail. And we'll just set players map with the key of agent to the custom player that we just created here. This is very important. You're really going to want to learn this stuff. Now, to go with that, we have on player removed, which is happening on the get play space player removed event event within Fortnite. And that is way down here. And this just simply removes the player from the map. So this is something that I just copy and paste all the time. It's it's just a, a way to remove an item from a map. Kind of convoluted, but that's the way it goes. All right, so the next thing that we're going to cover is the on cache button interact. Now, the buttons pass in the agent that pressed the button. So we're going to grab the custom player. Now, this is also a failable thing because we've got these square brackets. So we wrap it in an if statement. Then, because we have CP now, which is the custom player, we can say, hey, player class, which is an int, by the way, get that class. And then we have our tens and zeros that we're going to instantiate because we need to use those for the gold grantors. So you'll see that in a second. So we check to see if the player class is the poor class, which is one, right? We've got this set up here. This is a constant. Constants are usually capitalized. So we've got one and two, right? Poor class and rich class. And we want to check for that. Are they poor? Or are they rich? Now you might be thinking, well, how do we know which class they are? If we remember right here, we've set both these class selectors up to have a function called when the switched event happens, the class switched event. And down here is where we set our class for our player. So we grab the custom player, just like we did up here, nothing different. And then we set the class to one or the other. Now, the reason we're using constants is it's just a good practice to do. Rather than putting one in here, we want to use poor class or rich class. It's also easily readable. It's something that if you were to have 10 classes in here and you want to remember which one is which, it's a great way to do it. All right. So back to the cash button thing. If the player is the poor class, well, they have less money. Now, remember, we have a variable up here of how much gold to give, which is 150. This could change because it's a variable. This could change based on the amount of time played in the game. It could change based on how many zombies were killed, whatever. You can set this up to be whatever you want and change it whenever you want because it's a variable, not constant like these guys. These guys can't change. So we're going to instantiate tens and zeros. We're going to grab whether or not the player is a poor or rich player. And then we're going to do some math. 
Now let's talk over this math really quickly. We're going to set up an actual gold amount that we're going to give, and that's going to be the gold to give divided by two, and we're going to floor it. So flooring it means that we're going to, if you were to take, um, say, seven divided by two, you know, it'd be three and a half. But when we floor it, it becomes three. If you want to be a little bit more generous, you could go ceiling, which would raise it up to four. Four. So it rounds it up or rounds it down, or you can use round. I'm just going to use floor. So I'm going to bring it down. So if it was seven, it would go down to three. Actual gold would be three. Now we've set it up to be 150. So when we floor gold to give divided by two, we're really just going to get 75. We didn't need the floor, but it converts it to an int. So you actually need that. The division that happens here will return a float value. We want an int, so we floor it. Another quick tip. The next thing we want to get is the ones. So we want to get the ones by grabbing the tens. So how many tens did we have? So we're going to floor again, actual gold divided by 10. And that will give us our multiple of 10. So we'll use the item grantor, which is down here to grant this item this many times. I'm getting hit in myself. The ones is done with a little bit more math. We're going to multiply the tens amount. Okay, So let's work the, through the math of this. So we're going to get 75 here right? 75 here. Uh, let's call it that. So we'll get 75 right there. And then here we're going to get tens. So this is going to give us a seven value. So tens will be seven. And then the ones we're going actual gold, which is 75, right? Let's call it that 75 minus the tens times 10, which is 70, which equals five. So we would have five ones, which would give us 75. Hopefully that makes some sense. I'm going to leave that there. Okay, so if it's the rich class, then we're going to grab the tens of the gold to give. The full gold so is 150, right? So we'll do the math on this one. 150 divided by 10 equals 15. There's nothing to floor, but we do floor it because we need an int. And then we set the ones gold to give minus tens times. So gold to give is 150 minus uh tens times 10, so 15 times 10, and that equals zero. So there are no ones in this case. So I printed out those tens and ones. You could see that if you look back in the gameplay, and then we're going to run a couple of loops. So we want to check and make sure if we're wasting our time, we don't want to do this loop if the tens is zero. So if it's greater than zero, let's run this loop. Now this loop is an interesting one. You can use this a lot. What we're doing is we're looping. So we're setting a value i, and we're not using this value, but we could if we wanted to, to start at one and go until tens. In the poor class case, there's going to be seven. So it'll go from one to seven. That's how many times it's going to grant the 10 count of gold. And same with the ones. If the ones is greater than zero, then we want to run this loop and we use J this time. It's just different. One dot dot to one. So one in the in the first case here, it would be five. So one to five grant one gold five times. In the second case, it's zero. So it won't do anything. So those are two ways that we can test to see which class or team a player is on. Do something either inside a verse or do something automatic with the class designer because it is a device that Epic has made that automatically carries out certain things based on the class or team of a player. That is everything. Hopefully that has been useful. And if you have any questions, let me know anytime. All the code is going to be over on Patreon for all you legends. And that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one.